if you're one of the people that have nothing better to do than watch all my videos, then you know I did a video just uh, earlier about uh, a SIG P250 subcompact I'm having to build because I couldn't find one to buy in the configuration that I wanted it in. Not much of a build, it's just putting the parts together for a gun that's already made to be parted out. But in that video I made the statement of the only reason I'm having to put it together is because the only place I could find that had the gun the way I wanted it was Bud's Gun Shop and I would rather have my toenails ripped out than I actually deal with Bud's Gun Shop. I believe I actually said something about I'd rather make out with guns and gear than I would uh, deal with Bud's Gun Shop. Now those of you that are wrestling fans, this is going to be kind of a shoot video. I mean I'm not going to make any jokes in this video. I don't even want to think I'm joking. I'm not kidding. I do not like this company and I'm going to tell you why. Now, I didn't want to say why before because you know, I felt like, oh, it's just me and blah, 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 and I've had problems with other people before, so I'm just going to let this go. But uh, if you go back and look at that video, about half of the comments on the video are dealing with, you know, what's your problem with Bud's Gun Shop, and a lot of them are telling what their problems have been. And all the PMs, almost every PM I've gotten today has been about, why do you hate Bud's Gun Shop? Because here's why I hate them, because here's what they did to me. Or here's the practices they do that I don't like. So I can see it's not just me. So I'm going to say, screw it, and I'm going to say, since everybody seems to want to know, I'm going to tell you why I hate Bud's Gun Shop. Now, uh, the primary, uh, there's like three reasons. I'll build up to the biggest reason. I'll start with a little reason, go to the medium reason, go to the biggest reason. Well, the little reason is I don't like the way they do the pricing. You're buying something off the internet, how often you pay cash, why do you list the cash discount price like it's the main price? People don't pay cash on the internet. That's probably, what, 2 3% of your purchases are done with cash. So just list your real price. Uh, they do that <clears throat> They do that because it makes them look like they're like $20 cheaper than everywhere else, but really they're the same price. They just don't let you know that until you get to the checkout. There's a little blurb under there, but if you really want to do it right and do it honest, put your real price, and if you want to put the cash discount price underneath of it, do that because it's the internet. It's not likely that it's cash, digitally set up to cash discount price. So advertise the most likely price. That's a minor problem. It's just the way they do business I don't like. The second one is the way they do business that I don't like, uh, but I still think it's, it's a pretty sleazy thing to do. Even well, even, just, even though it's just something I personally don't like, I think it's, if you do it, your period, your period, you're sleazy. And that is the way they treat customers that are waiting for guns. I've had this happen to me, and I've seen in the comments on my other page and in PMs today, it's happened to lots of people. If Buds gets a gun in that they've got a lot of people that want, instead of honoring the, the, the uh, or I guess I forget what you call them, like the back order status or the, you know, like the list you get on, like if it's your gun shop to buy a gun. Instead of honoring that, they take the gun, they put it at auction and let you all fight over it to see who pay, who's willing to pay the most for it. That's pretty sleazy. That's pissing on your customers as far as I'm concerned. People that have spent their hard-earned money in your store have come back again and then get on a list to wait for something to come in and then when it comes in you tell them, hey, I think I can make an extra dime off this, so I will pit you all against each other. That's crap. That's sleazy. Uh, I don't like when they like when big companies like that use auction sites. And I don't mind when they use gun broker. Like if they got a bunch of guns that they haven't moved in their store and they want to get rid of them, that's great. But if you're using auction sites in lieu of satisfying your customers, then you're pretty sleazy. You're a bad businessman, in my opinion. I don't like that at all. So that's the second thing I don't like the way they do that. But they don't honor people's place in the line waiting for guns the way they try to make a do an extra dime off everything by auctioning it off. If you, don't, if you want to be an auction site, be an auction site. If you want to be a gun shop, take care of your customers. If you want to be a business like that, take care of your customers. Uh, so that's my two minor problems. Uh, now the major problem I had with them, now I thought was pretty specific to just me, but two of the people that PM me today had the same problem I had, almost verbatim. Uh, I don't know if it happened around the same time or not, but it was almost the same problem, and Bud's dealt with it in almost the same way. So I'm going to tell you exactly what it is here. Well, many years ago when I was just a little tiny Yankee Marshal, I uh, wasn't a day over 40, uh, I decided I wanted a gun. And it was a hard to find gun and Bud's had it. Well, the problem was I was broke. Uh, I had a business where I was flipping houses and we flipped our houses with cash. We had enough cash to buy the house, fix it up and then sell it. But the problem was if anyone out there has flipped houses before knows if you're a small time flipper, by the time the house is on the market, uh, you're eating macaroni and cheese and you've got no money. And that was clearly the case. I mean, we had no money. We were scraping. We were like, mm, I hope I got enough in my checking account to, to buy gas for my car tonight until we get the money for the house that's sold. The house is already sold. They already threw everything. They were already through their waiting period and everything. So we knew the money was coming. It was just going to take a few days. People who sold a house know it takes time. There's certain steps you got to go through. So I had this credit card that, you know, had like a $15,000 limit. I didn't like credit cards. I'd never used them to kept as an emergency. So I was like, you know, just once I'm going to treat myself, I'm going to buy this gun, 
And uh, I know I'll have the money for the house sale in two weeks. When it comes in two weeks, as soon as credit card payment comes in, I'll, I'll pay it off in full. Won't cost me much in interest. And I'll get the gun that I want and won't have to wait to see if I can find another one later. So long story short, too late, but long story short, I do that. Uh, get the gun, happy with the gun. Uh, a couple weeks later, my credit card statement comes in. I'm like, oh, this credit card, card statement's going to be like $1,100, but I've got the money put aside to pay it, so it's not a big deal. Open up the credit card statement, and it's over $9,000. So immediately I panic. I call Visa, blah, blah, blah. I tell them what happened. I tell them I've only used the card once. And they're like, yeah, this happens. You know, we'll look into it. I file a complaint. I file a dispute. We, they launch an investigation. Uh, turns out, you know, I told them, I said, I've only used the card one time. And they're like, this shouldn't take, this shouldn't be much of a problem since you've only used the card once. It's either, the, basically the investigator told me, it's either someone in their office misused the card number, one of their, someone at their credit card merchant misused the card number, or someone at their bank of deposit misused the card number. So he said, there's not a whole lot of options here. So they said, it shouldn't take long, they should get it fixed. I was like, oh, good. That, they said, I shouldn't be liable for any of it. So I'm like, great. So, uh, lo uh I go online and I'm like, you know, I'm just going to make a casual post here. And I just made a post telling people, I said, boy, if, you know, if you use a credit card to buy a gun online, you need to be careful. Make sure to check your balance a week or so later. And I told them what happened to me. Wasn't judgmental about it or accusatory about it or saying that, oh, this is a bad place to buy. I was just telling them, I was like, and my credit card company said it was either this, this, or this. I said, I, I personally even said, I'm betting it's their bank. Because I had seen stuff recently about banks where people, low, low level employees at banks are stealing credit card numbers. Well, immediately Bud's gun shop gets wind of it. Their employees come in and start harassing me, trying to bury me in the forum. Uh, their manager comes in and starts harassing me, telling me, calling me a liar, saying Visa hasn't called him, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, it's not up to me if Visa calls you. I spoke to the people at Visa. They said it's going to be an easy investigation. So they probably called your bank. And so he's bad-mouthing me. His employees are bad-mouthing me. They're even creating new screen names that are created that day to slam me to make it look like more people were slamming me. And the employees had such bad grammar and spelling that you could tell the other new screen names were them. You know, they'd misspell the same words and use the same poor sentence structure. So you knew it was them. So that was pretty sleazy. And I heard from some other people this has happened to them too. Similar things have happened to them from Bud's gun shop. So, you know, any gun shop that would do that, that would treat their employee, that their a customer like that, is scum as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that's my own personal opinion of them. Uh, well, all they had to do was come in. If they wanted to come in and say something, what well, they should have come in and said, hey, we're sorry, this didn't happen in our store. Uh, if it happened with our bank or our credit card processing company and if we find out that it did, we will switch banks or credit card processing companies. That would have been the kind of response that would have made me say, hey, these people are doing what they're supposed to do and they're a good business. But instead, they chose to take the low road. They chose to be assholes. And I'll never say a good thing about them again. And that is why I hate Bud's Gun Shop.